It's easy for people to understand why losing Earth's magnetic field creates a danger of radiation, how it puts our technological world at risk from solar storms, and even how it could trigger climate shifts and volcanoes. But the 90 degree tilt, the world turning over, that takes a bit more evidence and mechanistic evidence at that. Let's do that now, shall we? It's one thing to have it be part of most ancient stories, religious texts, and in the sediment history pointed out by every catastrophist for centuries. But even if those lines of evidence are unconnected by timelines and geography, they are still just a curious set of coincidences, all suggesting the same thing, but in need of some more scientific proof. So let's look at two critical pieces of evidence we cannot ignore. First, the mammoths. This is what most people think about, but this is a complete fantasy. What you're seeing is nowhere near accurate. These animals needed so much food, hundreds to maybe more than a thousand pounds of vegetation a day. Does it look like this mammoth could find it here? No. In fact, every single mammoth that is part of the flash frozen mystery that so many have heard of is found in an area of the world where there is not enough food. And that's taking today's climate. We are 12,000 years into a warm interglacial cycle. There's not enough food. So during a much colder glacial cycle, when these animals were frozen, no chance. While it is worthwhile to ask how they could have been frozen so quickly, it is perhaps more interesting to ask how they survived in such a frozen place during a glacial cycle. The answer is they didn't. The simplest explanation is that they were at much lower latitude, where vegetation was plentiful, even during a glacial cycle, and they were then thrust to the polar region when the Earth turned over 90 degrees. Combine this physical evidence and fairly elementary logic with the ancient stories and sedimentary coincidences about the Earth turning over and the great floods that resulted, and one has to pause and genuinely wonder. Now, before we hit what I think is the best piece of evidence, this is where people always ask, but aha, Mr. Smarty Pants, what about the ancient ice? Hundreds of thousands or millions of years old. How could that exist if the world turns 90 degrees and the now polar regions were at the equator? There are two things to consider. First, isotope dating has some problems, but when it comes to ice, it has catastrophic problems. Carbon, oxygen, chlorine, all the normal isotope dating methods are complete garbage when it comes to ice. The only way to date ice properly is with krypton isotopes. This is a great example. The Tibetan ice caps were thought to be older than half a million years, 500,000 years old at the youngest based on chlorine isotopes. But now, after krypton dating, they say the maximum age may be as young as 17,000 years, meaning it could be even younger. That's a ridiculous error. For more than 500,000 to no older than 17,000 and possibly younger, right off the bat, those old ice arguments are nonsense. But let's go ahead and take that even further. Tropical glaciers exist today, 12,000 years into a warm interglacial cycle. They are still here and in many places in the tropics. So during a colder glacial cycle, you really think Antarctica is going to melt away? No chance. And for the people who say, but wait, those glaciers in the tropics today are at high elevation. I'm guessing they have no idea about the elevation of Antarctica or Greenland. Yeah, those are not melting at the equator. They will persist, glacial or interglacial cycle. So now, let's get to that best piece of evidence. Major Maynard E. White, who went to the Arctic in Project Nanook, kept the classified data and classified documents from the Pentagon meetings, and he gave them to his son, Ken White, to publish years later in this book. They not only found evidence of a magnetic pole shift every 10 to 12,000 years, but that the Earth turns over 90 degrees. They dug down and found alternating polar and tropical fossil layers, one after another, each about 12,000 years thick in time. Not only that, but the Pentagon documents he kept included their scientists and those from the RAND Corporation, which is the government's secret science lapdog even till today, showed the mechanism of how the Earth tilted over 90 degrees from that magnetic pole shift. It looks like this, a 90 degree tilt, then a tilt back about 12,000 years later when the cycle happens again. It is already underway now, 12,000 years since the last one. Now, there is another layer to this piece of evidence, but first let's review. 
Almost every ancient culture and religion describes these events. My favorites are from ancient India, the Book of Enoch, the Bible, and Zoroastrian texts. They are supported by the geologic evidence of great floods triggered when the oceans wash over the continents as the earth turns over. The mammoths could not have survived in the polar region today, and definitely not in a glacial cycle. The old ice argument fails twice, by isotope problems and by the fact that glaciers remain in the tropics today. And then the classified data and scientific reports from Project Nanook, the Pentagon, and RAND all point to the same thing. The Earth turns over 90 degrees. Now, the easiest way this happens is during the Great Solar Flash, which is also evidenced as part of being in this disaster cycle. Modern solar storms are proven to induce electric current all the way down into the mantle, and when the big one happens, the solar flash, the crust will be unlocked from the mantle due to the geochemical changes below. Rand, the Pentagon, Chan Thomas, Einstein, and many others did the math and checked the evidence, and they all say that the Earth would tilt such that Greenland would shift southward to the equator, and the side of Antarctica just south of Australia would shift north to the equator. Now, this would put the new geographic poles near India and near South America. Remember that. Now, I said this is underway again at this time, 12,000 years since the last one. The magnetic poles have already begun to shift, well ahead of the Earth turning over, and they are actually on a collision course with each other near India. If we presume one would stay at that location, and the other magnetic pole would pop out the other side of the Earth, then the 90 degree tilt that we have described in this video would put those new magnetic poles right back to the geographic poles from the model that was classified, which also happened to be very close to the Bermuda Triangle and Dragon's Triangle magnetic anomalies, respectively. So how many coincidences are we supposed to ignore? The ancient stories, the religious stories, the sediment evidence of the great floods, the mammoths, the debunking of the old ice argument, the classified documents, and the current magnetic pole motion. Yeah, coincidences exist. Not this many. The world is going to tilt over 90 degrees and the oceans will once again invade the land. Get ready. The math suggests this will happen in the late 2030s or 2040s. I'll see you in the morning for The Daily Show. Be safe, everyone.